driving north up uh, along the road that uh, we know as the street. <laughs> uh, which, uh, it's largely because we you probably noticed we just passed a street lamp. Yes, I did back. see some. Uh, um, not intact, also, quite no, not intact. No, not intact. Um, but th th that was probably really because this was the the sort of main hub, I suppose, really right as far back as the first through until, until the 80s right. uh, of the sort of the administration and the workshop the fact that we, we've had to restore some buildings sure. and this particular one here uh, our office and the one just ahead uh, our workshops uh, and every time we, we've done a little bit of restoration work, it takes away a little bit yes. of the feeling of dereliction. Yes. And uh, it, it's been quite a difficult balance to, to try and keep that. And so uh, one of the things we, we don't do really is any kind of clearing or tidying up or mowing grass no, or right. either cutting nettles or brambles right. or whatever. Uh, because we, we feel it's important to try and keep the site looking yes. uh, uh, as it was in sort of the latter part of its history. A lot of the junk or the rubbish is actually all that's left of some previously very important experiments. Now, of course, some of it might just be junk or rubbish, but we don't know that at the moment. And so we have left it. And the other reasons are that, of course, the very act of removing it, particularly on the fragile shingle habitats, was going to destroy the very thing we were trying to save. From the few declassified files at the Public Record Office, Grant Lahore has discovered that early atom bomb trials on the island were a risky business. After all, there was no precedent for this type of work. The entire bomb was here, and in, in Blue Danube's case, you're talking nearly five tonnes of high explosive. Yeah, it's seriously dangerous work. It was very dangerous work, and certainly in, in this particular laboratory, one of the main experiments was about mimicking the vibration in an aircraft, and of course that can't be measured. So what they were doing, and they, they had some very crude early equipment here, uh, sort of big mechanical vibrators, yes. and, uh, and so effectively what they were doing is they were shaking five tonnes of high explosives <laughs> to a guest point yes. that they thought mimicked the aircraft. Yes. And so it was, I think in the early days, it was very much sort of seats of the pants stuff. Although, you know, decay is part of the whole philosophy of what's happening here now. It's almost symbolic now, mm -hmm. rather than if the, the, the labs, all the laboratories are very similar, everything has been stripped from them. Yes. So they, they left as just these sort of yes. stained concrete walls. Uh, and so really their, their importance is almost as symbols of the Cold War yes. uh, in the landscape now, rather than as actual structures. Well, that's very, very well said, I think. I mean, it, it makes me feel something that I felt the first time I came here, which is that because the buildings are so decayed, they seem to imply that what they were here to experiment with is also no longer with us, which of course is not true. It's not true. <laughs> so there, no. is a, there is an odd and very alarming tension in looking at them, I think. You have to keep reminding yourself that what started here was only the start of something which all too wretchedly is, is continuing elsewhere.